Welcome pilots, my name is Hybrid V, and last week I talked about my experiences with 323 in the Evocati build, and one of the most common comments I got in that video was people asking when I thought 323 was going to go to either Wave 1 or Wave 2 or even more open waves. Now, I can't give a definitive answer as to when this build will go Wave 1 or Wave 2, as my Crystal Ball currently is in the shop. However, I can make an educated guess based on how CAG has been approaching 3.23 so far. Originally, I thought CAG would conceivably have the patch out sometime by this week, possibly at least by Wave 1 or so. And after seeing what they were putting into these additional builds day over day, it was clear that stability and data collection was actually the main focus, and many features, of course, were still missing. So now, more realistically, it looks like they may be targeting a release by Invictus, which generally falls around early to mid-May. Now, you may ask yourself, why Invictus? Historically, CAG releases patches before Invictus launch week, either as an entirely new build or a X patch meant to provide additional fixes for the current build, as well as providing assets for new ships and whatnot coming into Invictus. Furthermore, we know that 323 will not be going live until at least after the 15th of April, as that's when the current Jumptown event ends. And again, the reason why is historically CAG never releases a new build in the middle of an ongoing event, so that is a consideration to keep an eye on. Now, this wide release window does give them the ability to polish up features, focus on stability, and eventually roll out more features and roll it out to the wider PTU audiences a little bit more slowly rather than rapidly like they did in the past to make up deadlines. Hopefully this extra time in the oven means that the build will be a lot more stable upon release, as one of my big concerns right now currently is server recovery and generally how it behaves. So there has still been instances of servers going into boot loop spirals, which I've told you guys about before in my previous video, where the server will die and for some reason there's just some issue that causes it. Maybe a player goes to a bad spot on the server or they spawn a lot of items or something happens that causes the server to just keel over and die. And what happens is the server then goes into recovery mode. It recovers and spawns everything back in once again. But that also means it spawns everything that's causing the problem initially, which means the server inevitably just keels over and dies again anyway. And it goes into this death spiral where it just keeps rebooting and dying, rebooting and dying until CAG basically just wipes it clean and starts over again on it. And that's a pretty big problem because that can lock players out. You have to remember when you are in a server, you're kind of locked into that server until you have fully logged out. If the server dies and you just decide to quit because you don't want to play, you may be locked in there for good for a long time. And then when you get put back in, the game tries to put you back into that same server or shard, I should say. And unfortunately, that causes problems again because you are now locked into that server that is not functional. It causes a lot of problems. CAG really needs to get a handle on that. On top of beyond the recovery boot loop issues that they kind of have, and it seems like currently right now in the builds I've played, a lot of that has been quashed, but of course it could always come back up again. But the other main concern that I've been having is what happens when you actually accept a contract and then the server dies? Currently what happens is when the server recovers, you lose the contract. And I don't know if it actually penalizes you with the actual reputation loss. Not entirely certain. I have done one mission where I had already completed a mission and I was leaving the bunker and then the server died. And my immediate concern was that the turrets were then going to turn on my ship and attack me because... I didn't have the contract anymore. I was originally in the warning time that you have to leave the area before you're attacked by security because you are now trespassing. And I was worried that because the server had just recovered, I lost that kind of breathing room window to leave and they were just going to start attacking my ship. Luckily, I didn't see that. So I'm hoping that that's actually an issue that has been addressed and taken care of. It seems like it is, but anything's possible at this point. And even worse, it could be something even worse for somebody who's in the middle of a mission and the server dies and comes back. Hopefully it still remembers that you are allowed to be there instead of then having the AI turrets just turn on you and engage you. I'm not sure how CAG plans to uh, actually address that whatsoever. It could be that CAG may just turn off turrets attacking trespassers. I have no idea. It's hard to say it's unclear currently right now in our builds. We don't get any warnings that we're currently trespassing. So it's hard for me to convey to you all here whether that's actually the case or not. We'll have to see. Uh, I think they probably still got to work on getting some additional UI warnings and stuff like that into the game for us to kind of, you know, keep track of that stuff. 
On top of that, we still have features missing from this build currently, such as the finalization of Master Modes. Currently, Master Modes is in the build, of course. However, it's apparently not finalized or finished whatsoever. So apparently CIG is not asking the Evo Cadi for feedback currently in regards to Master Modes, despite it being currently in these builds. And I guess it's just in an early state. Yeah, so it's I guess it's probably just changing hands over and over as they're kind of polishing and adding things here and there. Uh, the other thing that's still missing, despite it also being in this build, is the personal interaction systems. So you can see floating uh, button, you know, prompts telling you to hit F and all that. All that stuff is there and whatever, but currently, apparently it's not finalized and they don't want feedback on it just yet. The other thing we're missing is instance hangers. We haven't seen any of that. We're missing the freight elevators and hull sea hauling missions and reputation based hostilities. I've also seen item banks populating all over the place, whether you're at a landing location or you're at a station, it's all populated. It's all there. Uh, they just don't function whatsoever. And apparently it's not being asked for feedback. Of course, it's not in the patch notes or anything. So these are things that are still not quite put in yet. And they really haven't given us any ability to get feedback on that. So maybe we're waiting on those as well. So this indicates that the build may have some time to go still. In the past, CAG would release nearly all the features that are expected to be into the build for Evocati to test and then get some polish and feedback before opening it up to the PTU2 wider groups for additional testing and feedback. However, in more recent patches, they've sort of been rushing the builds, sometimes releasing to Wave 1 and 2 before the builds were even feature complete or even stable for that matter, as they rushed to get the builds out before scheduled deadlines were approaching. This meant less time for feedback and bug fixing. Now, hopefully with this new larger window that we're seeing here before Invictus kicks off, CAG will focus on getting the build just right before moving to the wider PTU. And I really hope CAG does put a lot of time into it. I really would like 323 to be a lot more polished for a live release, being that this is probably one of the biggest content drops CAG has put out for us in a long time. And this is thanks in part to the Squadron 42 crew being all hands on deck coming into the PU feature builds and providing the integration and additional bug fixing feedback and all that stuff is all necessary. And they have just a huge crew to work on this, whereas prior was kind of almost a skeleton crew to some extent. So now with all that said, when can we expect wave one? It's still hard to say. I mean, theoretically, they could put out a build right now if they really wanted to. They've done it before in the past, like I said, when they've decided to rush things. However, I mean, it seems like they're really trying to take their time with this one. So it could be any time between this week, coming week or next week or another. I don't know. Past the 15th. I don't know. It's hard to say. After which um, they may decide to do a much longer open PTU cycle. So we may actually could potentially get like a wave one or two, like maybe next week or the following week. And then after that, they continue to open waves more and more waves and use that as a time to actually focus on just having the PTU be a more open build for people to play in for a long period of time, maybe a week or two or three weeks, who knows how long they need, really to get all the data, collect as much as they can, polish off features, and just really generally fix things as they move along. But we'll see, we'll have to see. Again, I don't have the answers here, but we'll see how things turn out in the end. All right, to cap off today's video, I do want to talk about and a little bit of an update with my experience with 323 so far. I finally got to see some copians, the little kind of uh, dog slash cat creatures that have been added to this build, and they are pretty awesome. They are kind of randomly seated around green zones all over Hurston and Microtech from what I've seen so far, and they are spawned in packs, and they seem to be pretty cool. They, I mean, like one of the interesting things I found it's just walking into a forest and just trying to find them is you can actually hear them from a decent distance away. You can hear they have a very kind of like scary, really like kind of almost a howl, like a, like a dog almost, but they don't, they're not actually howling. It's hard to describe. I'd have to actually show it to you. Hopefully when these builds become non NDA and they move to wave one and two, I'll be able to show you what that sounds like, but I thought it was really cool. It was really cool to just hear them kind of making these sounds off in the distance as I made my way towards them. I would then see them and they would then attack me. And it's pretty cool. I was actually surprised. I thought their AI was going to be pretty dumb, but their AI is actually quite sophisticated in that they will attack you as a pack. And what happened was, you know, that's what happened to me. I saw a pack. I started engaging that pack. I took a few of them down and then they ran away. And I thought that was the end of it. So I tried chasing them only to find another pack along with the ones that ran away 
now coming at me. So the ones that ran away aggroed more of them and they formed a pack and came after me. And so I started gunning those ones down. I was dodging their attacks everywhere. And then some of them ran away and they picked up even more packs. So it was just wave after wave after wave. And it was just like this heart pounding action. It was really, really fun. And, you know, like I would just engage them. I was trying to find a gap in their attack so I can med pen myself. And then, you know, I'd be shooting and then I'd have to reload. And I was like, oh, no, I'm in the middle of reloading, uh, which is kind of annoying because right now, currently, even though they're doing this really big uh, feature update for FPS, it still doesn't turn off auto reload for us for FPS weapons, which is still just mind bogglingly stupid. I don't know why they don't give us the ability to toggle off auto reloading because I can't tell you how many times I almost died in that fight simply because I couldn't switch to my sidearm when my primary ran out. And it's so dumb. I don't know of any game that doesn't allow us to turn off auto reloads or even games that generally use auto reloads that much anyway to begin with. Generally, auto reloads is not really a thing because it's always better to give the player control. The moment you start taking control away from the player, the game starts becoming less fun. So yeah, I'm, I really hope they are considering adding the ability to turn off auto reloads just completely because I would never use it. I, have, I would never recommend anybody using auto reloads. It's just dumb and it gets you killed. And it's gotten me killed so many times in FPS fights, both in PvP and PvE. So yeah, hopefully they will address that at some point. But yeah, anyway, the copying. So what's cool is taking them out uh, would also give you the ability to loot them for their horns, which is meant to be like a crafting material. Now, currently it's not really used for us to craft yet. Maybe in the future it will be, but I do know that in the lore, it's meant to be a crafting material and you can sell them. I haven't currently found a place to sell them yet. It might be that I just haven't been looking in the right spots yet, or maybe it's not kind of plugged in yet. Not entirely certain. Couldn't tell you off the top of my head quite yet on that. I will say the animation for looting them is, it's okay, it's passable. Uh, it's, it's about the same as if you were looting a dead NPC with magazines on them on the ground, so your character would just reach out and grab them. And that was it. I mean, what's cool though, is that the horn actually disappears from the physical model and you can see like where your character apparently like sliced the horn off. You can see like all the blood and stuff. It's really cool. Uh, I just wish there was like a cool sound effect when you pull the horn off, like a, like a squishy ripping sound, like you're ripping the horn off or something like that. That would make it a little bit more better. Uh, cause currently, like I said, right now, all it is, is you're just reaching and grabbing it as if it was just a magazine on the character. It'd be nice if there was at least like a unique sound effect for, you know, ripping it off. So it just added a little bit more to it. I would like to see something like that, but overall still really cool. I still haven't found the Marox. I think this is what they're called. They're Marox, uh, the birds, the burbs, the kind of little pterodactyl things. I haven't found those guys yet. I'll still keep looking for them. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the update I wanted to talk about. There's other new stuff came in. For example, the Gladius got another pass to its audio. It sounds a little bit closer to the Squadron 42 Gladius, but man, the boost, oh, the boost on that thing sounds so good. I love it. And I love how when you're uh, using the space break or you're using boost in reverse to engage those retros, how, mm, mm, how loud those things sound and how just in your ears, it feels so good. I love the sounds. Like I said, I can't wait until we go to wave one or two. I'll be able to show you guys what that sounds like. It's, it sounds awesome. I can't wait. But anyway, folks, I'm going to go ahead and cap things off here. If you did indeed enjoy my video today, talking about when I think wave one could possibly come around, please leave a like as it really, really does help out the channel. And of course, if you want to see more videos like this and much more down the line, be sure to subscribe as well. And of course, if you want to go a little bit above and beyond and support the work that I do and get a little bit of a shout out in the videos, you can also join and become a channel member to help support the content that I put out here on Hybrid V Audio. Until next time, fly safe, and I'll see you all in the black. Contacts front. Somebody coming Hello. downstairs. Watch that door. Right. Target's down. Moving up. Fine. Clear. Contract complete. Contract complete.